Amid rising hospital bills, families across Kenya are grappling with heart-wrenching decisions. What happens when a loved one is declared brain dead? Tonight, we speak to leading neurosurgeon Dr. Julius Kiboy to demystify what brain death means, how it's diagnosed, and the legal and ethical landscape around switching off life support in Kenya. Many thanks for joining us, Dr. Julius Kiboy. Thank you. Yeah, Karibu sana. Uh, let's begin by talking about what exactly brain death is. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, and thank you for uh, inviting me to, to your studios. And uh, basically, when we say brain death, we normally refer to what we call brainstem reflex uh, absence. Normally, the brain, uh, I've come up with the, an artificial brain here, uh, it's a plastic brain. We have the frontal part of the brain, then you have what you call the temporal lobe, then you have the cerebellum, which controls your balance. All this connects through the middle part of the brain here, we call it the brainstem. This connects into the spinal cord through the brainstem. So clinically, when the brain is severely damaged, it goes into a situation where the brainstem, therefore, doesn't work. Or then that's when you mention brainstem death. Then clinically, your brain is not functioning and you cannot survive. Normally, the heart can continue to beat, especially in young people. So this is where the difference is. Okay. You can be brain dead, but you're not clinically dead. Okay. You can be brain dead, uh -huh. you can survive for a month. Yeah. You can survive for a year. You can survive even two years, because I can keep on pumping your heart with drugs. We call them adrenaline uh -huh. or dopamine. Basically, when I confirm your brainstem death, we need now a discussion with the relatives and family. And you need to have confirmed with another doctor. So normally these tests are done by two doctors. Okay. So that the two doctors now concur. One there's a concurrence is when now we don't stop the machine. Mm -hmm. But there's some alterations we can do on the machine uh, to really see that uh, a natural event can occur. Okay. But clinically dead, you have to have your heart and your brain not functioning at the same time. And we normally wait for until the heartbeat and the blood pressure completely drops. Okay. That's when now we say you're clinically dead. Uh, how severe um, should the trauma be to actually lead to what we're calling brain death? Oh, yeah, the, the trauma has to be so severe that uh, most of the brain is completely damaged. We measure severity of head injury with something called Glasgow Coma Scale. And you will then grade it. So your severity of injury is graded to where it goes below eight. We measure three things, all right? Verbal response, motor, motor response, and doing me and you now opening our eyes. Mm -hmm. At 15, we are normal. So if that score goes below eight, you are severely brain injured. In terms of confirming brain death medically, walk us through the procedures. As a neurosurgeon, what are you looking at? Absolutely. This is a, it's very clear. Once we, we define you as severely head injured, then we take you to ICU, which basically means you cannot be able to breathe by yourself. Mm -hmm. So that's where we put you on the machine. We put you on a ventilatory machine. It's called mechanical ventilation. So once we put you in the machine, we now start assessing your reflexes. One of the things we assess first is your eye opening. Are you able to open your eyes? You can't. Then once I see you can't open your eyes, then I do what you call a corneal reflex. Mm -hmm. You see, if I, if, if I approach your eyes like this, uh, very close to your eyes, you'll blink, number one. Yeah. Then number two, if I touch what you call the cornea, the black part of your eye with some cotton wool, you'll also blink. Mm -hmm. So the, it, it's, it's a, we call it corneal reflex. Then after that, you, you already have a tube with the machine. So you're breathing through a tube. Then that tube, I can push it in and out. Normally, if I push you and you're conscious, you'll cough, you'll react. So this person, you, we call it a gag reflex. He'll not have a gag reflex. Then now we take it to another higher level now. We now start doing caloric tests. One, I take your head, you're right? You're on the machine, you're in coma. I start rolling your head left and right. Normally, if you're alive, uh, really, uh, if I, I turn your head and you're alive, you, your eyes will roll. Mm -hmm. Then the second thing I have to do then is I take cold, ice cold water in a syringe, 50 ml, I inject it through your ears. If I inject this cold water into your ears, your eyes also will roll. But in this case, your eyes will not turn if your brain stem death. Okay. Then clinically, which is very, very important, is now I disconnect the machine. Remember you're on the machine. So the machine is pumping uh, oxygen and breathing for you then I see whether you're able to breathe. Yeah. I'd like you to speak into the uh, protests um, that yeah. the country has encountered in recent weeks. Some situations yeah. where protesters have been in shootings yeah. that have found them 
in hospitals, perhaps under your care. Um, speak into sensitivities around the confusion about people not understanding how it, a particular case that was declared brain dead, how it got there and what that essentially meant. We all know what recently happened and we were, we were involved in this uh, operation. We, we really tried to make sure we can save uh, this patient. We always try our best. And, uh, uh, some of these brain injuries are so complex, right? Uh, so the confusion comes in where your brainstem reflexes, these are the ones which help you breathe and eventually controls uh, even now eventually your heart rate. There are so many factors that happen. And even your consciousness, your conscious level. So when, when your brainstem reflexes are absent, then most likely you're going to die. So long as your heart continues to beat, all right, can there be a miracle? It's possible, you know, we, we are believers. Will that person yeah. ever um, uh, go back to their normal functions, you can't. if at all? It, it, it's impossible. It, it's never been recorded. There, there are situations where people have been staying, brainstem reflexes were absent or your brain dead, but they were unconscious because of some other events. And then uh, patients, uh, they start waking up. You know, you start seeing a flicker of movement. They start opening their eyes. But it's very, very rare. There must have been an error in the first definition of a clinic, I mean, a brainstem reflexes, absence, and therefore brainstem death. In terms of how long typically it would take to confirm a brain death after a catastrophic brain injury, how long would it take? Uh, it can take as short as within one hour, within 24 hours. Basically, if, if you come to ICU or casualty and you've had a real traumatic injury, the, the assessment I've told you, the Glasgow Coma Scale, mm -hmm. if you come in at these three, We've got to do very quickly and confirm, no, 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 this patient is critically ill. We don't, we don't disconnect the machine, all right? Uh -huh. But it's an agreement. I have to discuss with the family because the family sometimes uh, do say that we want full resuscitation. So you, you've got to wait until the family tells you, you know what, we, we don't want any resuscitation. Talking about the Kenyan law, does it clearly define brain death and when it comes to sensitivities around life support yeah. and when to turn it off, can a family member make that call? The Kenyan law has very clear definitions of brainstem reflex. And these are now in the hospital where we institute very clear documentation, all right, in the private hospital and even in our, in our Kenyatta National Hospital. We have documents where these are the criteria, the criteria I have defined for you. Yeah. All those tests have to be done. Once you do that, and then you call in another doctor, and then they set it up, it's very, very clearly defined in the ethics and in the board mm -hmm. as to what you institute. But then now, we don't have a very clear law on now you know, stopping on the machine. We can't. We know that you've been involved in landmark surgeries in this country. When a loved one is struggling financially because the loved one has been on life support for months on end, what are hospital policies on that? There's no clear answer there. You know, the, the Kenyan society, fortunately now we're able to fundraise, we're able to have support. Uh, you, you really want to, the relatives to get up with the emotions and understanding that this person is soon going to leave you know, and is going to die and uh, you prepare them very well and then the financial comes in second because I, I know the finances we don't want people to go selling in their land but uh, critically when we say your brainstem reflexes are absent within a within maybe a days or a week absolutely if you've done a very good test the person will die it's not a very long time it's where now we've had relatives who have said no 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 can you maintain we have uh, our relatives who are abroad. Uh, we have our relatives who are in the up country. Uh, you know, then uh, can we continue supporting the blood pressure? Please, uh, let's wait a little bit until somebody comes. So we have all these different scenarios because uh, de death is a very emotional thing. It is a very, uh, you know, it's a finality by itself. If you don't do a good closure, then we always have events that come up later on mm -hmm. that, uh, oh, this was not done well, or this was not very clear. So that's why the, 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 the documentation is very, very important. And then the communication, where you emotionally and emphatically, you know, with a lot of empathy, you connect with these relatives. Dr. Julius Kiboy is a leading neurosurgeon in the country and he's helped us demystify what exactly brain injury, brain death is. Thanks so much for watching and thank you so much for your time, thank Dr. You. Thank you. Thank you.